No. Hi. Now we're recording. Hi, what? Amy Lee. We are not recording. A lot just happened. <laughs> no, no, Nothing no. A happened. lot just happened. Nothing no, Cass, happened. that was if, if you're not going to let me be comfortable in this space, <laughs> then, This you is know. a safe triangle yeah. table. We're Look, just starting yeah. right now. We got so much feedback. Hopefully, we can see Jamie's face. Because we got a lot of feedback on the YouTube video, last week's video, and thanks for watching it, that we couldn't see Jamie's face. Really? Oh, because I was yeah. behind the mic? And they asked for Cassim's face to be covered up yeah, a little yeah. more. Yeah, yeah. So if I can, if I may, here we go. <laughs> this is what this everyone's better? looking for. So there you for. go, listeners, viewers. Is this better? We can do whatever you want. Can you see me you, behind uh... my blue light glasses? And I'm like half. They want me half. So you fully covered me, half covered What were you other comments? Um, you know, there was a lot of good, there was a lot of good comments. I was surprised. I, I was. I honestly watched it back and thought I was so annoying. You watched yeah. it back. Oh. What do you mean? What? What are you watching? Why? Why watch yourself? I never, I never do. Yeah. And this is why. Yeah. I thought it was a little annoying. I think I'm you were sorry great. Sorry if I was annoying. I was I just. I was just like talking a lot. Well, look, we That's appreciate everyone know, that came. I know, but it was like a lot of me. Left a comment. <laughs> we got a very small but strong following on YouTube That's right now. That's all we need. Yeah, we are gonna Little break. Army. We're gonna break a few hundred subscribers here at any moment, and we we want to thank those of you that are in on the ground floor on this channel. You guys were here before everyone else. What are they called? What are our What are our people called? Peepees. Kasim, Kasim, Kasim says Kasim says he doesn't want to give them names. Yeah, oh, I know. Oh. I, but let them name themselves yes, if they want. Please. But for now, I call them peepees. I like peepees. <laughs> These are little peepees that watch us every. Every week, Jamie. Had, I went to Jamie's house on Sunday, and you have everyone sick now. Well, Cutter, both my kids have influenza B, and the way it has taken them out is devastating. Like 104 fevers, body aches, like the two of them, like shivering That's but terrible. sweating, so bad. Right after Rob left, what's B? It's just the strain of it. Okay. Because you could get a flu shot and still get the flu because your flu shot covered A, B, and C and you got D. I don't know. My mom took a flu shot in um, October and just got up off the couch three weeks ago. <laughs> I swear to God. But you say the she's a little dramatic, right? She's a little dramatic, but she um, she gets she got the over 65 flu vaccine, which I guess is stronger. And- she literally went to the emergency room three times. They called the ambulance on her one time. She sorry, was incapacitated from the flu shot for two months. Don't tell Cutter this because he thinks this flu shot's a scam. It's yeah, like, I don't do the flu shot. She's you don't? they nope. made her anti-vax. My own mother is now anti-vax <laughs> because she was fine before she took this flu shot, and then she... now she she's like she's a different woman. You know? Wow. She's different. Wow. She'll never be the same, my own mother. She just <laughs> cooked her first meal like last week. Poor thing. But we have to let everyone know also you didn't do ayahuasca. Yes. Yeah. Last week you said you were going to go do ayahuasca with a shaman. Catch us up. What happened? And we said the shaman was probably a little fugues. She, mm. She's this, not. That's a time. Uh, guys, I don't know what this means for like my year and my life, but like <laughs> I was literally about to get in. So she was very ill that day and we were conversing with her and her husband and like saying like, should we not do this? Like, don't push it. And then she would be like, no, you know what? I feel better. He can lead it more and I will be there to support. And it was like this back and forth all day. I and I felt so, shaman. so bad for them. And about 20 minutes before we were going to like meet up, um, she was like gonna have to go to the hospital. She was so sick. So it was wow. canceled. Um, and like the whole day I was trying to be like, this is the purpose of it. I've got to go with the flow and accept what's happening and that it's all for me and it's for the best. Like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, eh, this didn't work out, but I'm, <laughs> I'm still bummed about it. I really wanted to like kick off my new year Yeah. that way. Yeah. You said that. And now it's all gone to shit. You know, my, my whole house is sick and you get the bad juju. Well, what didn't the, and the last time you were going to, the last time you were going to do it, the shaman got sick too, right? I don't know uh, that girl. I don't know what the I'm fuck saying. Happened. Don't you see? There's like a. You mean that I shouldn't do it? Maybe I shouldn't mm. do it, but like these, like maybe not like L.A. shamans. It seems like a such a fraudulent thing to me. Like it just seems bullshit. Like I just think these are people who like a year ago were working in no. like some corporate thing, and now all of a sudden they're like, oh, I had an awakening when I was. Let's just say TBT. 
we'll come back to this. I don't want to talk about ayahuasca. Throwback anymore. Thursday? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what's TBT? Put it on the table or something? TBD. Ty- That's how TBD. tired I am, you guys. <laughs> I'm on two hours sleep of four days. TBD. So why do you not sleep? Because when one is They're like awake. shitting and the other They're one. They're awake. They're up, screaming, crying, needing me. It's like they took ayahuasca. Maybe they did. Right? <laughs> They're like, are they pooping everywhere and throwing up? They're not pooping and throwing up. A lot of boogers, um, though. I saw a lot, a lot of boogers. A lot of boogers. Yeah. Um, high, high, high fevers, body aches, crying, coughing, just sadness. And you haven't gotten sick. Uh, when they when they got diagnosed, the pediatrician wrote my husband and I Tamiflu prescriptions as well. Mm. And we took we took like two pills in one day, supposedly was what how. Kasim, you would have loved watching me crush Jamie's son in Xbox. The well, cutest uh, thing ever. What did you crush, play? Uh, NHL hockey. You know how to play games? Video games? Yeah, you, you, know, not, you didn't let him win. Do you, no, are you kidding me? Do you <laughs> not remember coming to my house and bringing your Nintendo and we played yeah, Mario, Mario Kart, Kart? You don't for, have a system, so I no, don't... But come on, I mean, when you... You, you just know, stay sharp? It's a natural... Yeah, you have a natural ability. Yeah. 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 Right, you... you I feel like it's probably better you don't have one at home. Because no, it would, would be, be horrible. Yeah. yeah. But it's just like show business, right? I was at that for 10 years, come to this podcast, knocking it out of the park. Crushing it. There you go. Yeah. It's just... Uh, Absolutely crushing it. I can't help it, it really. <laughs> I'm I'm very stoked at our first video and, um, and, and glad that people... Some people double dip. They listened and then watched. I told you... They had that to some have. people would. Yeah. So they, they're they really annoyed with Jamie. Like oh, they're I, just. I want to give a, a, a cool. Give me the reviews. I need the constructive criticism. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give a shout out because we got some new uh, logos. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's right. We were on our Instagram. Um, you may notice that we have a new Pajama Pants logo. And that was done by a listener. And her name is Ellie.PSD on Instagram. She's. Uh, she just liked the podcast, found out about it from her boyfriend. Um, she listened to all the pods and re- and listened to uh, me talk shit about my own uh, logo design. Right. And she was like, she's a junior at a college working towards her bachelor in graphics, so she was excited to try her hand at it. I thought she knocked it out of the park. Out of the park. It's great, yeah. Normally, I'm a guy who gives a lot of notes, right? It's more if I'm paying for a logo or something. I go, yeah, can you tweak this? Can you do that? She sent them, and they were like already there. Wow. Already there. Now- this leads to another thing, and this is something me and Rob have talked about. Hold on. So there's no, a lot of noise going on outside of our, our <laughs> podcast building, and some of you might know our producer, George. He went out to go, like, se- could you imagine him like, yeah, trying what to if, se- <laughs> What if somebody's got George up by the throat up against the wall? Yeah, his feet are just, you know. They- what will we do, Bryce? It's over. We lock the door from the inside. <laughs> we, we do can- this podcast forever. <laughs> yeah. Now, this may open up some sort of debate, but th- that's kind of why I want to do it. Um, so, as you know, the logos that we had made, right? Yeah. And and they're, they're, she took the colors that we kind of have behind us and the ones that we've used before and kind of utilize the same colors but use a, a, a different design. In the Instagram comments, okay. uh, a Bon Jolton 23 says, is this a podcast for women? What's with these colors? I'm being serious. <laughs> so we're after. It was Bo. That was my son that wrote that for <laughs> yeah. sure. After he's like, "This is for girls." <laughs> after... That's for girls, guys. <laughs> Poor Bo. We're gonna acknowledge our first fan on the video, and it's gonna be somebody who left a bad comment. You think that's a? That's no, that's a... not on video. That's on Instagram, and I'm I'm no. opening I'm opening this up to this guy who pays attention zero. It. See if Jamie, who's tired, knows what I said, and you don't, because uh, you just get lost what? in the coffee. No, I. This is what I did. <laughs> Hello. I why went did, and why gave didn't props. you ask me if I wanted coffee? Oh, because this is selfish. This is you want to know why I honestly didn't ask? Because <laughs> I, I was running late and I was like, she's gonna want a chai tea latte, and, and th- that took ten minutes. I'll last take time. a vanilla latte. Now you know for next time. Yeah, just get Would it out of like here. To, can I Go, pour I'll some? I'll take a water. Got... Go ahead. I Go really ahead. botched this. Uh, no, so, no, no. What I'm saying is, we we should be acknowledging the fans who are nice and sweet yeah. and say all these nice things. When you you gave one shout out, and it's to the guy who yeah, yeah. said, no, no, crap. I gave a shout out to the to the girl. But yeah, but I'm also trying to I'm also trying to bring up a, a point that we can talk about, which is, do our colors uh, assign really to a gender? Girl colors, come on. If That's, there are okay. girl colors, they're those colors. Okay, That's so, all I'm gonna say. What green, <laughs> blue, neon pink. Neon yellow. I think they're very. I can't figure. I can't Here's, here are the colors: blue, purple, 
orange, yellow, green. Okay, now you could say it from a different perspective, which is all, neon purple, neon yellow. There's, There's pink no neon. In there. There's no, no neon, neon here. But those colors are also different. Even she knew that the colors you used were too girly for the show. She so used she, the same colors. She, no, because there was These a are the pink. colors we have. There was here. a pink and a yellow in our in yours. Yeah, but you know what's going through my head is when I make when I made that original one is like I wanted something to pop in the feed. You know when you no, put podcasts come up and yeah. pop. And by the way, when I pre presented that to you initially months ago, you were like, "That's great. That's perfect." I do, and I do, I love you. it. But then when all of a sudden it's but like, you're worried about what your bros think. Not at all. When it's our what the listen, Bon Joltons I'm, are saying. I'm, I'm 34, by the way. I don't give a shit what anybody. Like nobody's gonna be like that. Yellow is it? But when it becomes like just our logo or just this thing, when it's like seven different things and our theme is becoming like rainbow. It's a little weird because I don't, do be, I don't think our plaid? theme is rainbow. Wanna, like, what is a pajama pant to you, plaid? Oh, de well, I've never seen neon yellow ones. I can tell you that. I, I, I'll I'm tell you what I was yellow. doing. Who I was not thinking about. Pajama? I was Send not thinking me. about what pajamas look like when I was coming up with a logo. I was coming up with something <laughs> bright and colorful that would stand out in the feed. And I know, and I told you I like it. I'm, I'm your, I'm Casim champion. Now, I think everything you do is great. Besides now quench, yelling at. By the way, hold on. What when we? I told everyone that you're an angry driver. We. Oh Kasim, please, there was no. Kasim no, now me, I'm going to be angry. Kasim picked me up. Here comes some YouTube acting. Kasim picked me up in front of my building. We got, I don't even think we left the space before he's like, come on. He's like, what is that? What is that guy even doing? What I said, what is this? I said, what is this? But dude, chill. It's going to, if I was chill, it's going to be 10 seconds extra no, to get to this podcast. This chick was doing a five point turn in the middle of thick Wilshire traffic. Jamie. My husband is the same. It's got, it's that terrible. to me was, a, I was at a three. But by the way, listen, I always it's say this so in my bad. life. I can deal with people who are drug addicts, alcohol, you know, uh, whatever. You're in the mix of whatever's going on in your world. If if you admit to what's going on, where when we sit here, you're like, I'm not an angry driver. And I can't even shut the door to your car before you're yelling at somebody. No, I've never said I'm not an angry driver. What I am saying is that in the I last was not episode, I think today. we could insert a clip <laughs> no, no, <laughs> right no. here if I we am, wanted to. We, and we only have the, one you episode. Need to secretly I, video. I am. Yeah. I am an angry oh, I driver. But I, I like I said, I have to practice patience. <laughs> That's going to be our next. Day. Our, our, for, do you for, meditate? We don't do enough like Instagram that doesn't just have to do with like, hey, here's this episode. So, so what we're gonna do? Our next yes, come yeah, on, Rob. Our Get next driving footage. to the or even driving home from now. I'm gonna sh no. We let's let this one go out, and I'm let gonna show. Forget. Yeah, let him forget, and I'm gonna record him yelling at people, which ca caused us maybe four seconds of cool. delay from getting here to the thing we we have nowhere to go after this. Yeah, like, do it. We go eat? No, do it. Secretly cord your friends. See what happens. Well, we're. <laughs> Or weren't you just telling these cameras that they should show something that I didn't want them to show just 20 minutes ago or whenever mm. we started this? See, right? He's, I believe it's reap what you sow. That's what they say, right? It's Practice funny. what you it's preach. It's funny how we positioned ourselves today and how this is all going. I wonder if it has something to do with it. We got some emails. Okay. Since we want to praise, we want to show praise and people like us, the first one is praise for me. And I'm going to wow. read it. Wow. What a shock. How convenient. Subject matter, Team Kasim. Oh. Uh-oh. Hi, all. First of all, I've got to say I love the podcast. Can I look you forward see to if listening. This actually says that? It says it. <laughs> <laughs> she's starting to pick up on She knows. She knows. She's starting to Jamie, get to know Jamie, you are skating on thin ice, girlfriend. That's what happens when I'm tired. That's my favorite thing about the show is when we started it, Kasim and Jamie have never met. And now she's slowly starting to get to know the scumbag yep. you are. I mean, <laughs> you know. It's a little far. The longer girls get, get to know me, the more they fall in love with me. I am one of these guys that creeps under your skin, and before you know it, I'm inside you. Didn't you say the last girl you dated for like three years, you never said I love you or something? <laughs> yeah. No, not the last one. All right. Two ago. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, read your email. Go ahead. Team Kasim. Mm hmm Hi, all. First of all, I got to say I love your podcast. I look forward to listening every Monday. The connection between you all is so real. And it's a pleasure to listen and to laugh along to. <laughs> In the podcast, when you read out fan emails, it seems apparent that Kasim is unknown to some. <laughs> to a small few. To a small few. However, I'm here to give Kasim the respect he deserves. Unlike previous emails you've read, I am the complete opposite. I know about Kasim, but I have oh. never watched or heard of The Sopranos. Never heard of The Sopranos. 
Oh, okay. Perfect. Yeah, I I'm buying this. this. I would love to check the email on this and oh get an IP God, address and make sure so it's not good. yours, but okay. Can Never. I frame? I'm going to take this one and well, frame it. this person could be very young. No, well, I guess that makes sense, right? Or they hey, who's, who's they're gonna just find not those into... fucking YouTube videos amusing besides some fucking eleven year old? Yeah, I'm surprised okay. you can even go yeah. ahead. Oh, or maybe they just didn't have an HBO subscription in the early aughts. Okay, how about that? They never heard of it, but they didn't have any friends either. Mm. They didn't look out. This is great. This is you are doing exactly what I wanted you to do Come with on. this email. You didn't even know that email was there. What are you I talking grew up, about? I read this. It says praise for Cassie. <laughs> I grew up watching Kasim on YouTube, whether it was uh, California on Going Deep Ask Kasim. They've always provided so much entertainment and made me laugh effortlessly. I was thrilled to see Kasim back on YouTube with his Kasim show. Me and everyone Kasim else in my first grade class. Can I just get through this? Yeah, P.S. Don't get flu shots. Vaccines are bad. <laughs> everyone in my class is sick. I was particularly pleased to mom. see Kasim enter the Twitch scene for the sole reason that I could play Rocket League. One if one of, if not my favorite game to play, was someone who I have so much respect for. I consider myself lucky to have had that privilege. I could ramble on, yes you could, about how Kasim has provided countless amusement and happiness to me over the years with his great content and great personality. I was sad to hear about the troubling times you had in your life, but I would be naive to think that life is all singing and dancing. I'm glad to hear that things are much better for you now. You seem genuinely happy and it's amazing to hear, see how far you've come. You honestly always come across as such an intellectually genuine and a great person. I wish you all the best and know you a massive thank you for all the enjoyment you've given me and many more years over many more over the years and putting yourself out there. Rob and Jamie, you are clearly wonderful people. Oh. All right. It's I been like great listening person. to you yeah. and getting to know you. You clearly have a lot to be proud of, whether it be through your work or through your personal life. You've both you've both had some real achievements. The chemistry that you all have makes a show and it's such easy listening. I hope that you create plenty more episodes. All the best to you. Keep being great people. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas. And I hope you have a fantastic 2020. Much love here in the UK, Alex. Why were you talking shit about him? He sounds like a great guy. Uh, you were. That's actually what nope. you were doing. P.S. Uh -huh. I do have one question for Cassim. In episode 16, Jamie was talking about buying her son an Xbox. You went through the, the scenarios of what it's going to be like for him and mentioned how you had to wean yourself away from a game last year. I'm making a strong assumption that game was Rocket League. I'm just interested to know if you had a real addiction <laughs> to the game and how you were able to break away from the addiction. I imagine having a great girlfriend around means that you don't have to think about playing as much anymore. Mm. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, that game that was Rocket League. I played a lot of Rocket League. And um, I found, I, found uh, I, I was getting real angry with the game, you know? It's a, com it's a competitive game. Yeah. And do you have to drive in that game? You do, you drive a car. There we go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, you hit a soccer ball with it. Mm -hmm. Well, here, if I can speak seriously for one second about games and, and how, and there's a reason why there's a Gamers Anonymous and like oh, much yeah. like there is Please, ga an Gambling epidemic. Anonymous, there are things that we do to unplug uh, and not have to deal with what's happening with us currently in the moment. Those, <laughs> Whether it be drugs, alcohol, video games, gambling, food, there are a lot of things that we can choose to do that um, f fill temporarily fill a void, you know. And um, when I got sober, uh, you know, that stuff ju th that hole doesn't go away. It can be filled with other things, and one of those things was like games for a while. So as part of getting sober, yeah, sure, I'm not I'm not like drinking uh, anymore. But then um, now I'm finding myself playing a lot of games, maybe too much. And when those things are like getting in the way of like my creativity in my life, I had to pause and stop and think about w whether or not this was healthy for me. So there was a, a moment where I, yeah, I had to for sure back off. But now, when I, if I start my Twitch channel back up again, which I may do, I will get paid to do that stuff, and therefore it'll all be a wash, and I and I will go back into it. Did you ever? Did you ever get to the bottom? You feel of what? Uh, made your drinking like spiral out of control. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's it's problems I've had. Yeah, since I was a kid. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of uh, self esteem issues. There's like, um, guys got there's like mom. There's a mom stuff in there. You know, there's <laughs> never enough. There's a lot of things that you have to. What do you mean, mom stuff? Yeah, that's you Just know for there, me to make sure that I don't do that. Well, you know, there's. I'm like you know, when you're my age, you were hit as a kid. For sure. And if you come from a Middle Eastern family and, and, and part of the world, 
you probably were hit as a kid. By both you know? parents or just? Oh, both. It was a team sport. Nice. But, you know, that was a, not and not viciously and not like any more than I feel like other oh, people yeah. had. I don't want to make it seem like I was. Uh, you weren't beat. I, I mean, uh, maybe when Dr. Drew gets here, we'll get to talk about this. If he ever comes on the show, this is something I'd love to explore with Dr. Drew. Is and he's I've gonna, heard he's going to waste that whole hour on me. I, <laughs> once we oh yeah, there's a lot to talk about. <laughs> but I, I have heard. I can't wait. I have heard. I can't wait. People say that it does. No matter how physical, just the act, that act of, uh, even if it's like you know a slap on the bottom, something kind of what we think would be not a huge deal. All that stuff has ripple effects emotionally in 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 your child. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I, I would love to explore that with them. But there's, you know, I came from another country. There was like a lot of identity issues that I had growing up. There was a lot. And there, you know, and I was, I, I, I face those things every day. And instead of, you know, when I feel anxious, you know, instead of drinking, now I can either talk about it with someone, someone who I pay or, you know, people, friends and family that are close to me. That way I don't have to sit with the feeling. Because when you, we're all going to get to the point where we, are uncomfortable. We're anxious. Um, we, uh, there's going to be a point where, like, oh, maybe I, I would like a drink, or maybe I do want to play games and just shut everything off. But we have to know that those feelings will come and then they will go, and everything is ultimately okay. Right. Um, but for a lot of people, they don't realize that, and the only uh, medicine they have is either alcohol, drugs, or video games, or gambling, or for a lot of people, it's food. You know, food's one of the ones that we um, give a pass on for a lot of people. Uh, but, you know, people can abuse food just as much as they can abuse, mm-hmm. you know, drugs. For sure. You know, and it's, never... I just brought the tone of the show down, you know, no, and that's no. fine. Because we're talking about important things. I've never had... And thanks I for the email, Alex around. Thompson. That was re- really nice of really you to, nice to say. Alex. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, you made a believer out of me. I, like I could tell... I've never been an addict so to say, but I can totally understand just having that, like I'm, I'm an anxious person mm. by nature. So I can totally see that if I didn't have, for me, I have too much responsibility. I've, or I've, I've assigned myself too much responsibility even before kids, but I could have totally seen that if I didn't have that part of my personality, that I would turn to a vice that yeah. would just, you know, suppress that anxiety for a moment yeah. you feel like you've ever been addicted to anything well yeah i mean i had an eating disorder when i was a teen and i was addicted to just the control of my weight mm. the fact that i could keep making it go down even though i hated how tiny i was mm. i just couldn't relinquish that control because gaining went gaining weight meant i didn't have control anymore does that make sense it does, but also I feel like it's weird because anything I've ever been addicted to, it was out of my control. You know what I mean? Right. So that's it yeah, just, opposite. It's, I guess. Yeah, it seems like the opposite of what. Yeah. Because like when I was, uh, like I drank so much, and I definitely had like a alcohol problem. This, but when I look back and I go, was I really addicted to it? As much as I drank, I'm like, I don't know because no, because you could work and not do it. And... But I that's still I still don't think that means you're you're uh not addicted but like i just i look at my xanax and uh painkiller addiction and that and i'm like oh that yes 100 percent, i was addicted i smoked cigarettes every day for 20 years and sometimes i'm like was i really even addicted to those because i could yeah. i could have stopped but where, when i look at like xanax there's no question in my mind when i look at painkillers there's no question in my mind but when i look at like drinking i'm like i I don't know if if it was just kind of part of the whole thing it's weird did you have a hard time quitting smoking cigarettes uh a a little bit but not how'd you do it so one time i quit cold turkey and then it's so weird i went on a vacation i got on a plane when i got off the plane uh, I went to the store. I bought a pack of cigarettes. I went outside, like uh, the airport. I lit one up. I was smoking, and I was like, "Oh my god!" I was like, "I don't smoke." I just, I don't know what. It, it was, well, you're it was, an anxious flyer. 
I'm an anxious flyer, but it's also a place that I had been like six times. So where it was like it was like routine for yeah, you. Yeah, and it was like I went, I, I bought the cigarettes, I was standing outside packing them, like unwrapped, everybody standing there. And it was all the people that I always went with, like with our friend Ron. Yeah. We'd go once a year to uh this he had a friend who had a club in St. Martin, and we'd get all I got off the plane and I was like, Oh, this is the thing, and I was smoking cigarettes with them, and I was like, Holy shit, I hadn't had a cigarette in like six months. That's crazy. It was crazy. And then like I I was just like, oh, fuck it. I'll smoke for this vacation and then stop. Then uh, when I stopped drinking and all that, I stopped smoking cigarettes again. And what I did was I – the first thing I did was figure out like what's – how many cigarettes a day do I really think I need, which was like six. But I was smoking like over a pack a day. So I was like there's 14 or 15 cigarettes that it's like – if you were like, hey, I'll be there in five minutes, it's like, oh, that's five minutes, I can go smoke a cigarette. But do I really need it? Mm-hmm. Like, no. Or if somebody's like, hey, can we take a break right now? I got, it's like, oh, then that means cigarette. Where yeah. did I need it? But like, there were some like the after eating or like after sex where you were like, oh yeah, like yeah. I, I really want this, you know, cigarette. Or um, so I went down to like six a day and then five a day. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to smoke cigars for like a couple of days when I want a cigarette. I did that and then I, uh, I just was like cigars are so disgusting yeah. and like smoking it around people is disgusting that I just stopped and I haven't had a cigarette in I don't know five years when did Amazing. I meet you that was when I stopped smoking cigarettes uh five years ago 2013 mm-hmm. was it that long ago yeah because it was when I had Bo that you were like kind of out here yeah working on that show but even and that, that 2013. It's, it's something where I was like I want to stop this but I wasn't really like like when I stopped Xanax and Percocets I was like I I want to stop this so bad that I can't sleep at night and I couldn't do it. Where like cigarettes and drinking, it was never like that. Like I never felt that. It was like, hey, if I never go out again or never hang out with friends again or go to a party, like I never need to drink again. Like I don't care. It was more so like the type of person I am is one that like hates being in parties and group set and stuff like this. So it's like when I was 15, 16, and, and was getting pushed into stuff like that more like, oh, we're going to these parties and stuff. It was like, well, I don't want to be here, but when I drink, I love being here. So I just started drinking and more drinking and more drinking, and then like, you know, shit happens in your life, and instead of deal with it, you just keep drinking and drinking and drinking, and then all of a sudden you're 28 years old, and like I needed a bottle of tequila just to like feel like, all right, I'm ready, you know, like I'm ready yeah. to go out and hang out, but... Yeah, it's, you're uh, just all, you're you're altered, and you had to be altered in some way. Yeah, just to feel like you could hang. You but know? it was also because I had an anxiety attack when I was like, whatever it was, twenty three or something, and somebody's like, "Oh, you could just take Xanax," and then I just well, took Xanax yeah. every day for. Now, were you an anxious years. kid before you did the show? I never felt anxiety my entire life until when yeah. people said like, anxiety attack, and this. I was like, oh, I thought it was just that feeling when you're like, oh, I don't really want to do it, or. That, that feeling of like... What's a legit anxiety attack? Like, I thought I was having a heart attack. I thought I was going to die. Yeah. Like, I, my heart was pounding out of my chest. It was the middle of winter. I went outside in my underwear on my terrace. I couldn't feel anything. And then I went to... Uh, like, my initial reaction was just go out on my terrace for some reason to, like, get air. air. And, I got, and it was like somebody hit me from the inside with, like, a hammer on my chest. And it was like, oh. bang! Yeah. And I just shot up. I was like, I, did, I thought I was having a heart attack and I was so unhealthy that it made sense. Like I was like, oh, like I'm, I was sitting on my couch probably for a week straight, just like taking pills and smoking cigarettes and drinking, which is why ultimately I think I had anxiety, you know, because I was just killing myself. Yeah. Uh, but what, so I popped up, I went outside to my terrace and I'm, I, just, I started sweating like crazy. Oh. And I was like, okay, you're going to have to go to the front door and go downstairs and tell the, the doorman to call an ambulance. And as I walked through my apartment and went to my front door, I noticed like it started chilling out. Like it started to go down a little. It wasn't as intense. And I went to uh, my phone and I called my buddy who I knew had anxiety attacks. And I was like, yo, what is it like when you have anxiety attack? He said that. And he was like, you could come over now. I have Xanax if you want to take it. So I took Xanax then. And then I probably took Xanax every day for after that seven years after that. Because it felt so good. No, it feels nothing. You don't. You don't feel anything. You just it know just you're not going to have an anxiety you. attack. You can't. Like I. If never... I take a Xanax, I'm like drooling and mm. like. Right, but you've never. You've never had like an anxiety. Like but I. But I, I have would... anxiety. But when I get on like a plane, or or Got something it. like it's like, you know the feeling. Like I remember one time I was on a line in Six Flags to go on a roller coaster with somebody, 
and this is when I was in taking Xanax every day. And they were like, I don't know if I want to do it. Like, I'm sweating. I'm this. And I was like, and this is before I knew how bad Xanax was. I was like, you want a Xanax? By the, I gave them a Xanax. By the time we got to the front of the line, they were like, let's sit in the front. Like, it just it just takes it away. It takes that that <sighs> an, anxious anxiety. If it, when I just, I didn't know that I could just work on it and take it away like that, you know, which right. was, it was my, I feel it was my body's way of telling me, Stop drinking, you know, five bottles of tequila in a night. Stop smoking cigarettes. Stop doing Molly. Stop doing all this stuff. Stop staying in your house for a week at a time and not getting any sunlight. Just taking pain killers and like, well, was, finally my body just couldn't fucking take it anymore. And then as like now that I'm, I've gotten healthy and stuff, I feel like I haven't felt anxiety in, I don't even know. I haven't taken a Xanax mm. in three years or something. I took one to get on a plane. And then, like, I felt shitty for three days after that, and I was like, I'm just going to try not taking them anymore. And that was it. I haven't taken one in, like, three years. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, you know, it seems like you but there was But there was a big lead up to getting down to not taking Xanax, and I wasn't taking them. And then I took that one to get on the plane. Yeah. Don't, you can't just stop. Don't do anything that I'm, if I'm you're, advising yeah. ever. Don't I'm not do any of this. Yeah. If you are uh, addicted to pills, don't ever stop cold turkey. You it know, took me always a, consult a the very doctor. long time to when wean I, down I from three Adderall milligrams a day. I cold turkey. And I remember I had like shakes, sweats, nightmares. Yeah. Oh, when were you taking terrible. Adderall? <clears throat> She's a professional Call of Duty player. Yeah. And that's what they do. <laughs> I was addicted to Tiger. Tiger Woods. Oh, the game? Uh-huh. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, for like for like a year. Man, the power Tiger Woods has over women is outstanding. <laughs> uh, I was put on so when I was going through my divorce. Um, I obviously, I have a depressive personality, but it's more like if an event happens, it'll put me back into my depression. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So the d divorce happened. My MS started to man really manifest in my life. I was 24 years old on the show. Everything was a secret, including my divorce. So it was just like a lot on me. And I remember I was prescribed Adderall for fatigue to like get me through the day. And then Lexapro for my depression and the two of them together, I started smoking cigarettes. Do you remember when I smoked cigarettes yeah, for like a like year? Yeah, it was like my favorite year of all time. <laughs> I made so many friends, by yeah. the way. I was like so social. Great way to meet people. I was so, at that time, everyone still smoked in New York City. So like it was, like I was so used to going out to dinners with people and they'd all go outside for cigarette breaks and I'd be left at the table by myself and there was like no smartphones then. So I'd literally be just like sitting there playing snood or whatever, like the one game on your phone Casim's was. fan don't know what that is. But, um, but it was, it was a, too much. Like I felt like I was coming out of my body. So after finally a year and like I was like shrunk down too and got like super tiny again, I was like, this is not right. I was on like 25 milligrams of Adderall too, which is like a pretty high dosage, I think. And so I called my doctor and he's like, all right, just take 10 milligrams for a couple of days and then you should be fine. And when I did that, I literally went through like a detox for a couple of days. My boyfriend had to take care of me. It was terrible. Was what were you really, feeling? Really Anxiety? Anxiety. I was shaking. I had fevers. I had like, it was like a throwing up. I had like a literal detox from it. Yeah. It's dangerous. Because the, the, the painkiller... Um, withdrawals are like physical like that yeah but where like the the benzo withdrawals are way worse because it's all in your head oh. it just feel i've said it before but it feels like all day you feel like if your biggest fear was like sky uh heights and if like you went and like you went skydiving with somebody and like the feeling you would have right when they opened the door and were like are you ready and they were like just about to push you out the door like that feeling and it was from like Two hours after you woke up until you went to bed. <sighs> and you're just sitting there like, <gasps> like just trying to, oh, oh it's man. a fucking, that's what like, you know, I don't want to belittle anybody what anybody goes through with, you know, any withdrawals. But like I think about things like for me, like the alcohol and the cigarettes and the, even the painkillers, it was, it was rough, but it was like, I know in two days, I, three days, right. three days probably it'll be gone. Where like with the benzos, I was like, I'm going to die. Like yeah. I, I thought it was never, it yeah. was fucking, oh, it's so Our brutal. bodies are like little like chemistry projects, mm. I feel like. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That we fuck with. Rob's like my I fuck guru with my body. now where he's like <laughs> telling me like all the natural th remedies of things. Yeah, I'm like you shouldn't eat it. That's the only shit that I really think I'm, I'm, 
like I got down. I'm like I figured out how to make my body like with with food yeah. and all that kind of stuff and figuring out how to eat what and then yeah. Uh, let's let's bring let's let's have let's fun a little. Yeah? yeah. All right. Uh, I'm so, also addicted to pussy. <laughs> <sighs> Ditto. Uh, so, uh, look, I got another Read email. Wait, wait, wait. I, I want to ask Jamie a question. Oh. Well, so you were talking about your first marriage. You can talk about that if you want. How yeah. you were proposed to there, but also I want to know how you how were you proposed to by Cutter? Well, so I got pregnant by accident. Um, so you're a hoe. Whoops. He's, we call him our ambient baby. <laughs> we need some sound effects. <laughs> oh, this is another you know what? Tiger our, Woods reference. Boom. I loved ambient sex. Our fans don't know. Uh, Jamie has a special name when she takes ambient. Jambian. It's my alter Jambian. ego. Jambian. And how'd you get that? Because I would call <laughs> people and like play my ukulele and like tweet and like yeah. write on Facebook walls. Sounds like I want to meet this girl. Jambian's fucking awesome. She, I've met her several times. She's She's fun. Jambian she's great. Is really, I like her. I'll, I'll bring out Jambian. She's she's due. Oh, we should do a podcast where you're Jambian. Wait, did that would wait, be fucking how, awesome? Did, did Ron? How can we be so anti-prescription drugs but so <laughs> for like, them? Yeah, at the we same got time. it. <laughs> did Ron and Lori ever tell you a story when I, in St. Martin I like hyped everyone up that I was going to take Ambien that night and hang out? And I did, and Cutter was like, you were so annoying, because like, Cutter kept being like, go to bed. And I was like, no, they want to meet me. <laughs> ah, what a monster. Um, yeah, I'd love to see Anyway, that. so Cutter and I were about nine months into our relationship. Most so wait, of it wait, was- you, When you met Cutter, mm -hmm. you were just instant unprotected sex? Is that what you do? I was on do? birth control at the time. But I'm saying no cons right away first? Wow, that's- no. No, we used a condom the first couple of times. And then we talked yeah, about two things. times. That's enough. Two or three times. Yeah. yeah. See, before I turned 22, no condom. After 22, only condom. Sure. I understand. Yeah. And that's also why, like, sex is just not but as great I, as it used to be. But I was on birth control for a while of it. And then I went going into a more holistic thing of healing with my MS. And I was going to this doctor who I didn't know was, like, super Christian and had all these rules. And he told me for medicinal purposes for my body I needed to be off birth control but it was really more his beliefs I found out Ew, dude wow yeah, leave fucked. that shit at the door doc right so I went off birth control because I was so desperate at that time to like get better and this guy told me he could heal me dude fuck that guy so Cutter had come home I from playing like no yeah I'm gonna fuck that guy <laughs> <laughs> man God. we went to New York for Thanksgiving popped an Ambien and uh, out came Bo but at the cutter already had a ring, and I saw no because my friend showed me text messages from ring? him in like September, October, saying like I want to buy Jamie an engagement ring before I go back to play. I want to propose to her. So. Um, and you were together for nine months at the time. You said. Yeah. Wow. We. It's just like it. It's cheesy, but like we did know. Like I just. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was. It was it. So when I found out I was pregnant. Um, First, I was very nervous to tell him because he was only 22 at the time. 23. Uh, 22 or 23. And you sick um, bitch. I, well, I just said, I was like, uh, what, what do you think about this? And he's like, I want to spend my life with you. So Did it's you okay. feel like he was mature for his age? Very, very. He still is. Still yeah. is. We, we call him the old man. Yeah. I like him a lot. Good. He's one of the only ones you've ever dated that I like. I Thank approve. God. So so, how did Rob he... has so beef with proposed... Jerry Ferrara, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> I love Jerry. Throw Jerry's it out there, great. tag him, <laughs> put it on Twitter. <laughs> I love Jerry. Love Jerry. Love you, Jerry. Um, so he, I was, he had this whole elaborate plan, but I got sick with like a flu or some sort, and um, my girlfriend called me and was like, "I really want you to come over and see my nursery," and I was like so flattered that she wanted my opinion on her nursery. But it was really to get me out of the house. Mm. And so when I came home, all the lights were out in my house, which I thought was like weird. And when I walked around the corner, there was rose petals and candles like leading to like this back room in our house. And he had our song playing, like we had oh. a song. And he set up the iPad to record the whole thing, which I found out later because it was like So the, the second you room. saw the rose petals, you were like, oh, this is I it. Did, I just was like, it, I thought he was just doing something romantic. It's a wasted I opportunity. I, I would have been wearing a scream mask and holding a <laughs> large kitchen knife. And as soon as you came around the corner, I would have fake stabbed you and then proposed. 
By the way, that goes with our promo video that I was talking about earlier. Yeah. Yeah, and what did I say in it? See how well he knows you? <clears throat> I, I don't want to miss a good opportunity for a, a scare, is what I'm saying. <laughs> he didn't scare me. Yeah, all right. Uh, and he was That's a good sign. he was just down on his knee waiting with my ring. And what did he say? Did he say something cute? Yeah, something like, you know... Be you forever. I love that I pussy. Love I Yo, love girl, that pussy. I don't see this. Yeah. I don't I see the rest of my life ever. without this pussy. <laughs> I can't even say it. And what would you want to talk about? How you're for the first time you got proposed to? Oh, we, I didn't get proposed to. It was like this, like. Oh, see, I thought the way that that dude was, it would have been the biggest. Like, there would have been like hot air balloon. Like, it would have been like to uh, plan it with me so I can tell people. That's yes, exactly. <sighs> Gross, dude. Oh, he's. I was so young and naive. And hey, do you know any girls that have proposed to the man? No, but uh, I'm looking great. for one of those. I, I think you're no gonna get one. Like the, the 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 yeah. I it's think time, dude. Like, that's how it's gonna you, go in your relationship. Gonna There's no way. Me. It's time. And you're gonna be crying, and she's gonna be like, she's gonna be like, wait, wiping why would you do soot off her hands? To you, like this weekend. <laughs> what, would you, what would you say? Of course, he would say yes. He's a pussy. He would? Yeah, but he wouldn't. He would probably no. like regret saying yes, but he no, would say yes because he's scared of her. I'd be like, this is a joke. I'd help her up. You know, I'd get get off your. She doesn't need your help. She's a strong, independent woman. Yeah, she's the fucking best. Uh, what would you do? Wait, how would, would you if, say yes? if you were? Yeah, would you? You would say yes, right? He doesn't want to answer. I don't know. Don't make me. Well, come on in, Lindsay. <laughs> yeah, That's I love what that, was all that noise was. <laughs> yeah, she's planning her. Proposal. She's banging her head into the wall. <laughs> uh, so, how would if you were gonna You're propose? You're gonna get me beat. If you were gonna propose, it's not. Listen, it's not me doing it. She just does it for fun. I'm gonna how, come into the black eye in the next podcast. If you were gonna propose, how how do you think you would do it? Oh, I don't know. I don't want. I I want to be very mysterious about it. And if I have an audio of me doing it, have you ever thought about it before? No. So it's gonna be all original. No, no. I think I'd probably Maybe you do, could do it, it on in Twitch. Peru or something. <laughs> Peru. Yeah, yeah. On the on the top of a mountain. Kilimanjaro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Runyon yeah. Canyon. It'll be me, her, and the Sherpa with all our shit. You know. And the Sherpa would be. I would. On I'd, I'd give him a signal, and he would like pull. You know. Reach into his. Uh, oxen skin and pull it out you know and and there it would be it would be a ring pop because i'm not gonna travel with a real, i love a ring pop. i'm not gonna travel with a real diamond up a mountain but at the bottom of the mountain by the way your girlfriend would travel with the because she's not scared she like could you. be on a mountain right now yeah Absolutely. so the reason why i asked this question is because i watched a show called temptation island which is a horrible reality show it's really really bad and it's not worth watching uh one season was good the rest no but it's basically couples who are like together and then they decide four the four couples are going to go to this island the men go to one the women go to another and they put like 10 people on the island to tempt who are ready to fuck yeah who just want to fuck and ruin your relationship. i would be one of those guys it's it's insane it's the craziest thing ever so this one couple who the girl was really pretty and cute and very sweet like you could tell she's very genuine and like a nice girl and she's like i don't know why we're here but he says like we should do this so all right, like you know, and she's like, I'm never gonna find anyone. She's like, I'm so in love with him, blah blah blah. He's like, hey, listen, if she like, I'm not really that into her, like <gasps> w- whatever. Like if she leaves, I'd be fine. So he goes off to the island. None of the girls are like tickling his fancy, whatever the fuck. Doesn't find anyone. On the other hand, she goes off, finds a dude. Fuck but, yeah, she did. And the reason she falls for the dude is because she sees video of the guy on the island talking to other girls. They show her video. At these things called like campfires, and like they show or bonfires, Oof. they show video like, yeah, here's what of your him man's just talking. No, like here's what your man's doing, and he'll be like flirting with girls. One one dude, like one girl, fucked a dude on the first night. Another oh, dude went and like banged chicks. Like yeah, there's it's all crazy shit going on. But these two, it was like he was. Who sitting, are the people they bring in that are like yeah? Oh, I'm these just girls like are want to fuck right away. No, they're just like girls who want like more Instagram followers. I think so. He. Uh, and if you're not with one of the four dudes, you're just like sitting there in the corner by yourself. So they're like right away, they're really like trying to get at it. Plus, they're really good looking. So he goes uh, at, to the island. He doesn't find anybody, but he's talking shit in the beginning, like trying to feel it out. And he's yeah. like, yeah, I don't really care about her. I don't care. She sees the footage, starts to make a connection with a dude. So now at the end of the fucking show, they meet back up for the first time and they have to decide, do you want to stay with each other? What do you want to do? And this is what he says. Actually, baby, I've got a really, really big question for you. My last date I went on, we went ring shopping. 
you married me, baby, because I love you and I want you to be my baby, baby for the rest of our lives and I want to die next to you. I want to be that couple that lives next to your mom and sits on rocking chairs and drinks wine at three o'clock in the afternoon and tells funny jokes. Three o'clock in the afternoon? <laughs> tells Sir, you have a joke. problem. Tells funny jokes? His last date, he went ring yeah. shopping? Yeah, he took a girl and took her to the jewelry shop. And he, by the way, this guy's down on one knee. And we all know Let's this chick is... Give me the visual. What does he look like? So he's like, he has the sides of his head are shaved and he has kind of like hair like... You like, know, that's like my favorite hairstyle. Mine, yeah. So he's got like this going on, but the sides are shaved and like real douchey and he's like pretending to cry all the time. Like it's it's <sighs> so bad. And meanwhile... Is he beefy? We, uh, he's like jacked, yeah. So we know that she's over him. But he has no clue. So he's on the knee and he's like, Will you be baby, my baby, baby, baby? Yeah, I want you to be my baby, baby forever. And he's like proposing to her. And we and she's like, like she basically, like that's, there's no more where that cut off. It's very awkward. And the last line is of his proposal is, and, and tell jokes. That's what he says to her. He's like, I want to be that couple that Lives sits next to your mom, to your mom, drinks, drinks wine, wine at 3 p.m. and tells jokes. <laughs> it's the most awkward. And he's like, she's like, we got to stop this. And she puts a stop to it. And she tells him, like, listen, you wanted me to come here, blah, blah, blah. I met somebody else and I'm leaving with him. Yeah. And, and that's happened? it. Good, man. Does he like flip out? Oh, the guy's like fake. You could tell he's like. He might be on the verge of crying or not, but he feels like he has to sell it. So he's like fake crying. And the host is there who like, oh my God, it's amazing. And they're like hugging and, and, and they're like, you know, it's going to be okay. And she's just like, yeah, bring my dude out. Like, and the dude comes out and they walk into the sunset together. And that dude like runs off crying. Wow. And then they did a reunion show and everyone shows up except for that dude. Cause he was just so Great. embarrassed. No, that's good. The, yeah. You know, the, now with the bachelor, the bachelor just started, right? The new season I of the bachelor. I didn't see it. Did you? I, I don't watch it. I watched. Oh, you, that's right. You stopped. I haven't watched you it in like watched five years. All three what I hours? More. Ever since I got sober, I realized how dumb it is. I'm on Hulu, so I, I watch ad free because I'm rich. And. <laughs> baller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got the $13.99 month plan. Every on time. Hulu. That I'm laugh just... was at the people who watch with commercials. Yeah. That laugh you did after it. Like, <laughs> I watch it DVR so I can fast forward. Yeah, but he does yeah, no I work. also TiVo it just in case I want to watch it that night. I have Dish Network, so it automatically records it for me. Why not Direct TV? What do you need those uh, Middle Eastern channels with the Dish Network? I get everything. Don't make Middle Eastern show. jokes. I get You're prime, right. prime time. Who would do that? That's the only reason I used to, when I used to sell satellite TV. If somebody was like foreign or ethnic and they wanted the uh, the the channels from overseas, you know, that we'd have to sell them Dish Network because that was the only they were the only company that had the package. Dish for life. You know how you know how. Uh, that person said that Kasim is racist for using the black pregnant emoji. He sent it to me for the first time today. And I actually, I envisioned it as more racist than it really was because I think about me getting a girl pregnant and like her face is like, it's so sad. You know what I mean? Like I, it's, it's not planned. It's, uh, it's, it's, oh, so when you get a black, a pregnant black you emoji, use... you think she's not planned and no, it's sad? No, no. What because I'm saying in is... my world, Robert. No, no, no. That's not it at all. Why did you use it? I'm just saying. He said, "Like he said, hey, I'll be there in 10, <laughs> and then like black, black pregnant woman emoji. It's and not racist. Somebody it's... said it's racist for him to use it, and I was like, yeah, I was like that is racist. But then I saw it, and she's like, it's a very like warm. It's warm. She's 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 happy about being pregnant, and I just Absolutely. in my head, any girl that it's I would not ever, an accident would ever get pregnant, it would be an accident. <laughs> so I just imagine it as being like not f not warm. Like I got like this kind of feeling of like, oh yeah, I'm taking you know? the power back for them." Yeah, like it's sweet. Uh, look, there. Okay, so there's a couple things I, I wanted. To, I wanted to read this email because it's um, from somebody from Australia. Oh. And if you're in Australia right doing? now, and you you know we hear there's a huge oh. wildfire. And, Shit. Yeah. And we even knew before the Golden Globes. Okay. We didn't need uh, Joaquin Phoenix to let us know what was going on. I pay attention to the news. Who watches that crap? When people watch the Golden Globes, I lose respect for them. It's like you have four hours to watch P. Oh, I watched. I watched it just to see what would happen with Ricky Gervais, and also I, I, I love movies great. and film. And how TV. great was his opening speech? I I really enjoy Ricky Gervais, Me too. and uh, I think. It's very refreshing to hear those kinds of jokes on TV. Yeah, he's uh, great. You know what? Oh, sorry. no. No, go. No, no, please. After you, Do you know you, bitch. what he said in his opening speech? I watched that eight minutes Oh, you thing. did? Was yeah. it great? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. yeah okay. It what, was why, great. What, what, what was the thing you were well, going to repeat? I love how he was just calling everybody out, being like, don't come up here and accept right. your award yeah. for your work and you, use this as your political platform or your whatever because you work for these big corporations that do all of this stuff. Like, just be real. Like, you, you're, you're not like... 
you're basically calling them hypocrites. Yeah, well, people people don't want to hear about celebrities' political opinions. They want to hear about people who used to be celebrities and how they wiped their ass. That's right. <laughs> and that's what we're giving Which you. is mostly do sitting down. I think it's great to do something with your platform. I just don't think that those evenings are the place to do it. Oh, please. Uh, yeah, uh, Renee Zellweger. Just... Everyone was okay. Renee Zellweger was on another goddamn planet. And if I you don't know. know watch Hush. the clip. I loved it. And her and I have the same manager. <laughs> oh, okay. And no. everything You're connected she... to her. She was crazy, Jamie. Everything she was crazy she up there. Everything she said about my manager was true. That's the same man I know. And I love him so much. And I loved what she said. Okay, but she's on Ambient right now, so yeah. Whatever. I wish. Yeah, the Jam- Ambient Jambian is so fun. I, I. Let's yeah, but you're fun. Out. You're fun too. You're no. super fun. Okay, look. I, by I, the way, you've done this podcast. Hi, you're super fun. Just stoned, dude. Thanks. You were so horny that day. Um, <laughs> yeah, Kasim thought he had a shot when we left. Kasim, Kasim really thought he had a shot. He was like, I think. No, I don't know. I have a. I. 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 I a, I would never ask for a shot, but because B, if Carter? I did, I know it's it's a done deal. Because of Carter? <laughs> yeah, when she's high only. When she's high. My goal is to get you hopped up on Jambian and then just put you in the back seat of I'm my gonna car. I'm going to send you guys a video of take me you on somewhere. Jambian. Just tell Jambian. her, yeah, and we'll post it. Well, you need to get me an Ambien, though. I don't have a prescription. You are so easy to drug. No problem. <laughs> so yeah. easy. I'm like, give it to sure, me. Sure, I'll get you, yeah. Give her an Ambien and a martini, and she's yours for the weekend. Ew. All right, go ahead. You want to read? Look, okay, so uh, our our, um, here's a couple things about the Australia wildfires. They they are uh, out of control. (laughs) I see everything about. You know what really gets me is I'm sure people are losing their homes, and it and it's unfortunate that I think this way. But when I see a cute tiny little koala bear Mm, who's charred, whose fur is charred and has no tree to climb up and no eucalyptus leaves to chomp on. Uh, it breaks my it breaks my goddamn heart. Um, I hope you guys get it under control. I don't know what we can do. There is a girl selling nudes for ten dollars to raise money. I think she's raised Ooh. over a million dollars. I've looked at them. Uh, they are worth your ten dollars, I'd say. She's she's. I think if I may promote her, because it's for a good cause. Uh, she goes by the naked philanthropist. So if you are online and and um, do we know all the money's going to? We don't. We have no fucking clue. But yeah. uh, but uh, you know people like Chris Hemsworth uh, donated a million. Uh, Elton John donated a million. So there's a lot of uh, people who aren't. Although you can make the argument Chris Hemsworth had half naked in half his movies anyways. So um, that makes <sighs> him twenty five percent naked. So hot. Um, such a great body. Those hip bones. Anyway, so I, if I don't can think read I've this. ever seen a movie he was in, so I'm lost. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, Peter John says, uh, hey, mates, right off the bat, we know where he's from. I'm Pete, 30 years young and born and raised in Sydney, Australia. You don't want to do the accent? I can't. The hardest one to do. Relatively new listener, but already a big fan. No. Uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on. Obviously this a is a huge safe space. Fa- obviously a huge fan of The Sopranos. My question is, do Robert and Jamie ever think about how strange it is that people halfway around the world love and obsess over something that is based and probably only proper understood by the East Coast of America? He's yeah. referring to your show. Um, which is not true because people on the West Coast also obsessed over that show. But is that weird to you? That to, It's a global thing. HBO's everywhere. But I look at the show as, as it's about people from that part of the world but I think it's just more of like the thought provokingness of just like watching Tony go to therapy and him try to apply the things he's learning in there into his life whether he yeah. failed or succeeded and also the moral dilemma you had as an audience of you know you love this man and root for this man but he's also a cold-blooded killer yeah the themes are big enough to where you can just be can anywhere be, exactly um and the rest of this, for two years, I morphed into a mobster. My mates often looked at me quizzically when I'd yell, get the fuck out of here. Do it with the accent. I did. Oh, in an Australian mob? Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. It's pretty good. <laughs> really? I would have said he's right. He should never have done it, but... Uh, yeah, it may be worth <laughs> noting I'd say this while we were drinking beer on our local beach eating fish and chips. Uh, much mm. love. All the best in 2020. Kind regards, Pete. Thank you, Pete. Hope all is well Hope in Australia. Well, Thank Pete. you, guys. If you guys are listening from Australia, please um, let us know. You know? I, I do remember I the first time. I think they're busy right now. Yeah. Leave the Australians. Put them off the hook. What could they have more important to do than talk about how they love us Save and are obsessed koalas with us? and kangaroos um, and keep their homes but safe. But we're what's important. 
Mm. Oof. Oof. What? Why don't you take your shirt off and start sell- raising some money? Yeah, I want <laughs> yeah. to see some nudes yeah, for- Eight dollars uh, in three years I'd get. Uh, all from Kasim. Look, I don't know how much- Oof, we're coming up on it uh, on, on the end of the show. Yeah. I do want to um, take a, a, a quick moment to thank everyone again for watching- uh, not just listening on our, our our podcast, but just watching on YouTube, following us on Instagram. We have Twitter. Um, not following Rob on social media because he does not have Exist, any no. by design, and he likes it that way. So, ladies, if you are interested, you put, you just have to go through the uh, regular channels, which is askpajamapants at gmail.com. <laughs> yeah, That's also the Cass. place you can email us with the uh, nice things to say about me and how I've affected your life growing up. Um and Jamie's at Jamie Lynn Sigler on Instagram and Twitter. Twitter, Jamie L. Sigler. Oh. Jamie Lynn Sigler is too long, apparently, for my Twitter name. You know, okay. because, uh, so the, our first episode of YouTube came out, you know, a couple of weeks ago, a week ago, two weeks ago. And uh, all of a sudden, because I watched something with, the three of us in it, mm. my feed started showing me your videos. Oh, the algorithm? Oh, that's same. It did it for me and you on when you were on Artie Lang's show. Uh, okay. Yeah, on the side. Right, it didn't yeah. do that for me. It just showed me y- sure. you. But it, it did show me one of yours, James. Oh, oh and I what saw one? one of Jamie's too. It and it's probably the same me, one. It did show me one of yours, oh, James. Oh, fuck. It showed me your We music. don't have to do this. It could hurt her. It My showed me. Video? It showed me your music God video. God damn it. And let me tell you something. I went in. I was like, listen, it's right there. You got to click on it. So you got to watch it. I click on it. Can I tell you, I lasted 20 seconds. You'll be happy. I didn't watch the whole thing. I lasted 20 seconds. Well, you're telling her it sucks so no, bad. No, no, you can only it watch does. Tw- no, not because it was so bad. That's separate. <laughs> the, the reason why I couldn't keep watching is because you're so sexual in it that it made me. Oh, I may ex- watch. Extremely uncomfortable. That. Really? Like it. So I couldn't. Be- I have a question. Wait, hold on. Okay. I. It must be how guys feel when, like, their daughter comes down the stairs for the first time in, like, a skirt, and they're like, you're not wearing that out. You know what I mean? Like, because I saw you, the beginning of the thing is you making out with some guy. Who you the were, fuck was that? Like, and it's like a close-up on, like, you open mouth kissing a dude. Really? Made me, ext- and by the way, the guy is very, like, uh, every morning there's a halo, a very Sugar Ray. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. Love Sugar Ray. Yeah, he's very Love su- Mark McGrath. He's very Sugar Ray. I don't even remember this. And it is like. I just it, hate it. It's so, and, and I was like, okay, I that was hard to see, but because <sighs> it was like right in your, like, if there was spit between you guys, I would you would have seen, like, very HD. And I so <sighs> you see that. Then you're standing, like, in front of this house or whatever and so and you like spread your legs and someone crawls between your legs and you're given like a fuck yeah like like this kind of thing and i'm I'm still with it it's probably about 15 seconds at this point little slut jamie then james (sighs) you walk into the house you shut the door behind you Uh... you kind of you gotta look, James. Hello. You gotta, you gotta, look, you gotta look at me, He's James. He's doing the hello. You gotta look at me, James. You do this against the wall. You watched it one time and you remember all of this. I'm scarred. You against the wall like this, and you start. You're like, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little cry girl. Oh. You know, <laughs> this sucks, dude. I have shit like that that I wouldn't want in any of my close friends to see, and then let alone and make mimic in front of me. That's where I had I to. I don't turn. care. Well, I now, agree. now there's a video of me doing it on YouTube too, <laughs> so don't worry about it. But I you, would love to have a whole reenaction by yellow. you guys. <laughs> you're on the wall in like a dress, in like a skirt. Me, baby. Fuck me. Yeah, and you're writhing around, which I've never seen a woman do in my whole life. By the way, like it's, it's right, like, you've never seen a woman writhe. I mean. <laughs> against the wall by herself with no one around just dude, it looks like you were horny dude it, by the way Cass you love ghosts it looks Fuck like she yeah. was possessed oh. in this thing you might want to look into that uh, you might want to get your friends Maybe and I the was. backpacks and whatever you guys do the little helmets with the lights what do you on think them. we zap them I don't know what you guys do but yeah, I, it's not so, far from the truth she's against guys, the wall that is a time in my life I wish to forget it was something I was roped into contracted into and I cried every day I hated every minute of it you were writhing around, and it was it was at that point. I mean, I I would be shocked if it was more than thirty seconds in. I had to yeah. shut it off, and I think, and that's another thing I was thinking is like, Casim is like, we should do a rewatch. Have pod- friends that support you like this. We should everybody. do a rewatch podcast of Sopranos on here, and I'm like, well, I don't want to watch 
Soprano, and, and Cassim was like, we should, we should. How about we do a rewatch podcast of your fucking videos? Because my videos aren't oh. heralded as the best, arguably the best Depends on who you talk show. to. Pick up fucking Willie's email from earlier. Hey, He I said actually, you're like I'm the actually, greatest YouTuber not, of... Al, I'm actually Al, not yeah. against... I'm not against doing that to some of them. No, see, so you're... Yeah, but that's the thing. And I want to find the ones... And also, it's just me. You're part of an ensemble. No. It, I want to see... I want to go home and watch you. I'm going to go home and watch you. I want to see the one that makes no you the most... No fucking ZD anymore. Oh, no <laughs> fucking ZD. I want to see the ones that make you the most uncomfortable. Yeah. And I think we should rewatch them you together. You already watched my most uncomfortable. Yeah, but I only no. got 30 seconds in and it was alone. We should have it here. Uh, we no. should... We should, You know what we should do? If we ever get enough fans to do some kind of like live thing... That'd be we should mean go, to me. We should go... <laughs> really? Yeah, now you already have a bunch of people looking it up and making fun yeah, of me. Yeah, that's But you said, you said that Cutter, who's the love of your life, also throws it on in the living room sometime and you love him more than anybody. Yeah, I get mad at him. Yeah, but you you know, he's that's the kind of <sighs> What do we what can we do that with you? I just ruined a friendship. Did you no, bust out on a World okay. Series no, of no, poker no. or something? What can we what do you have that's out there? Yeah, and they only gave me forty grand for doing it. <laughs> <laughs> See, this, you're almost immune to it. It's not fair. Uh no, there's embarrassment. But you know what the problem is? You I put talk, it on our Instagram. I talk about all of my most embarrassing yeah. fucking moments and they're horrible and I think it's great. Do you feel like when you, if your embarrassing moment is not sober, then you're not as embarrassed because you could blame it on the substance? Uh, no, I, I think I still get just as embarrassed. For me, it's you like do? the highlights yeah. of my life are the most embarrassing still me. times. I love it. I think they're the funniest. Still a bag times. of bones. That's me. They're the funniest times. Like I remember one time I was walking with a girl outside of my apartment and I fell. And it was one of the funniest things. Well, yeah, shit I ever... like that. No, no, no. But I felt like it really hurt, and I was you on the floor it? crying, laughing because it was so funny. I had a bottle of water in my hand. It went a city block. Like I, <laughs> I fell so hard because there were two steps, and on the last step, I put my foot down, and it was wet, and it was like, whoosh, and my body went backwards. Oh. I fell on the steps, and the I've the bottle went so far because it was full of water. Went so far down the street, and I laid on the floor laughing forever like i could still i just think that's the funniest shit i think the embarrassing stuff is like that type of is embarrassing the greatest. stuff is funny to me but all right all right well whatever go watch my video make fun of me it's fine yeah. no 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 if you love jamie and like a we don't get it's do not that. even a brotherly way it's more than a brotherly way that i love support you. her it's, you know it, and you, you won't be able to get through 30 you seconds jerk of off it. to me writhing on a door Hello, Whoa. baby. Look at my pussy. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Exactly All right, thanks what for I watching. Was thinking when I did that. See you. See you in the next one. <laughs>